awards. Actor Jesse Williams called for an end to police brutality against black people by saying, quote, now what we've, done, what we've been doing is looking at the data and we know that police somehow managed to de-escalate, disarm and not kill white people every day. So what's going on? To happen is we are going, we're going to have equal rights and justice in our own country and or we will restruct their function in ours. Joining me now to discuss Heather McDonald, Steve Rogers, and Jamu Green. Jamu, I'll ask you that last part about restructuring, and, and, and it sounded like a threat. It sounded like uh, we're going to go on the offensive, and if the police don't get their act together, we'll go to war with police. Well, I, I don't think he, I'm not in Jesse Williams' mind. I, I was watching it and going wow the entire time of his speech. I don't think it was about a war on police. I think it's probably exactly what we've seen with his involvement in Black Lives Matter, where this conversation and the issues they've raised, the questions they've put in front of presidential candidates this election cycle, this wasn't happening a few years ago. So the activism is going to increase. It's going to continue to be uh, very candid and very much in your face like his speech was, like Black Lives Matter is, but it's not ultimately about arming and a war on cops. I think that's a little bit of a stretch. Okay, well, Heather, you just wrote the book, The War on, war on Cops. Uh, certainly there's a lot of friction and hostility out there. What, what do you make of it? Did you see the speech? Well, what's also hasn't been going on for the last couple of years is the, the loss of black lives that we've been seeing since Ferguson, which are killed by other blacks because police are backing off of proactive policing. We've had a 50 to 90 percent increase in homicides last year in heavily black cities because again the cops are not feel confident to get out of their cars and make those proactive stops. I wish that the Black Lives Matter activists would spend one one hundredth of the energy in protesting the death of a three-year-old boy in Chicago paralyzed now uh, who's taken in a drive-by shooting. That's Police shootings, when they're unjustified, are an unmitigated tragedy and disaster. But the police could end virtually all use of lethal force tomorrow, and it would have a negligible effect on the black death by homicide rate. Uh, Steve, I'm going to bring you in a minute, but Jamu, when that point is brought up to Black Lives Matter, they deflect it all the time. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is more black people are killing each other, perhaps this weekend, more black people will kill each other in Chicago than all black deaths at the hands of police this year. How come that's never addressed? Well, I, I think it certainly is addressed, and there are lots of community speech, organizers though. who are actively trying to address that fact. But it's not like saying you have to have one or the other. I think it is both. We have to address black on black issues Who does and that, crime. Though? Because I don't hear that enough the from president the president has community. done it with his Brother's Keeper initiative where he's um, been very actively hands-on working to address these types of issues. But you can't ignore the structure uh, and the power dynamics and the implicit and unconscious bias that is with police officers, with judges, with teachers, with ourselves. And we have to address that in a way that does stop these killings, that stops a 12-year-old boy from being being seen as guilty and being shot in a park while he's playing. Well, I know Steve and wants to get in here, but if I can just point out that a much greater percentage of whites and Hispanics who die by homicide are killed by the police compared to blacks. 12% of all white and Hispanic homicide victims are killed by the police compared to 4% of all black homicide victims. So if we're going to have an anti-cop Lives Matter movement, it would make more sense to call it white and Hispanic. I don't think and it's what anti about, cop though. And what about the number of police officers killed each year? The point is that this speech was inflammatory. It added fuel to the fires of racism across this country. It was unnecessary. What I I am troubled about is the narrative that is never spoken of the good work between the police departments of this country and the minority communities there's a lot of good work going on to build bridges with that speech said to everyone is we don't care about building bridges we're going to come after the police he's that is what most people i spoke to about that is what they received in that speech. We have darn good police officers across this country, and they deserve credit for protecting us every single day. Jim, is it fair to equate where black people are in this country now to 100 years ago and 200 years ago? 
Do, I, I mean, think absolutely not. Look, Charles, look at you here. Right. Well, I, you know, I mean, but that was part of the show, speech, though, that nothing has changed, no progress has I don't been made. Think th I don't think the words are nothing, but that there is still a lot of work left to be done. And standing on that stage at the BET Awards, and BET is not a black-owned company, that, I think, was, right. took a was very powerful to even stand in the face of this corporate media giant that per pervades these right. types of attitudes. All right, guys, we've got to revisit this again. Thank you very much. All right, here's Lou Dobbs.